Hi everyone, it's Denise with In Liquid Color, and today I'm really excited to be bringing you the winner announcement for the 2500 subscriber giveaway um, that I posted with the Portal Painter review a couple of weeks ago, as well as some fun swatches of the new Daniel Smith watercolors for 2017. Um, I do want to first apologize that I don't have footage here for you of the Portable Painter in action outdoors. I still haven't been able to find both a good day for recording outside as well as at the same time having room in my schedule to do so. So I will get that footage for you as soon as possible, but in the meantime I still wanted to announce the winner. I want to thank everyone who participated in that giveaway. There were nearly 200 comments on that video and uh, we've already reached 2,800 subscribers uh, and then some here on the channel um, since that video was posted. So thank you so much for your support of this channel. I am so excited to be bringing you new content every week and it is time to announce the giveaway winner. So I went ahead and used one of the online random comment picker um, generators that can take the videos from YouTube, go through all the comments, and pick a winner from them. I then cross-referenced that winner with making sure they were a subscriber and that they had followed the rules of the contest by posting uh, what they liked best about my Patreon perks in the comments uh, in that video. And I am very happy to announce that the winner is a longtime subscriber and um, I'm just really thrilled that I can say that Miss Catherine Sullivan, your portable painter is going to be coming to you shortly. So go ahead, Catherine, contact me, uh, preferably through my email address, but uh, any social media platform with private messaging would work as well. So you can get me your address, I can send you that portable painter, and uh, it will be headed your way. So thank you all so much for participating in this giveaway. I will have more in the future. Um, probably the next one will be at 5,000 subscribers, which at this rate, hopefully, will be pretty soon. So. All right, everyone, it is time to look at our Daniel Smith new watercolors for 2017. So first off, I wanna say thank you to Ophelia, who's one of my subscribers here on YouTube, as well as one of my patrons over on Patreon. She heard I was looking to get my hands on these new colors and wanted to try them out, and she very graciously agreed to send me one that she had in her possession. Um, thank you so much, Ophelia. She is such a kind person. I really enjoy getting to know her better over my Patreon in the last couple months, and I'm really excited to continue our watercolor adventure together. Now, if you are newer to my channel and uh, you're just looking around at my reviews and everything, you might have no idea that I am a huge fan of Daniel Smith watercolors, and that is because I don't have a review for them here on my channel yet. Um, the reason for that is I started with Daniel Smith, uh, before I had a YouTube, before any of this was a thing for me. Um, I had done a lot of research and decided that was the brand I wanted to start with. I've been kind of spoiled ever since. But Daniel Smith's, um, I mean, they have some sets out, but I haven't purchased any of those specifically. And so because I didn't have a set or uh, the tubes that would make up a set, they don't come in pans. I have a lot of them at this point of, of the different Daniel Smith watercolors. I wasn't really sure how to format a video for you to do a review, but I am working on one and I will get that to you very shortly. Um, but <laughs> needless to say, after all of this, they are my favorite watercolor brand and um, I just, I really wanted to take a look at these new colors. I do. All right, so if you are not familiar with Daniel Smith watercolors, they have a really large range, as I mentioned before, it's 238 colors before the addition of these eight colors. So the fact that we only have two single pigment colors here, and then we've got six multi-pigment um, paints here isn't too surprising considering they already have so many options in their line. Uh, you can only have so many variations of single pigments before you have to start mixing them. Um, there are a couple here that are, are interesting, and I'll, I'll explain why in a little bit, but if you've never seen kind of their rating system. Um, they've got a little diagram down here. They have a number, a different number, a Y or an N for yes or no, and then a little um, chart. And what those stand for is that the first number here, it's a Roman numeral one, is our light fastness rating. So one is excellent. Um, the four, the Roman number four is fugitive, or they have NR for not rated. And then we've also got a staining guide. So this is rated one through four. So one means non-staining, four means high staining. Then a yes or a no for whether or not it granulates. And then they have their transparency rating and they only have three ratings. Some companies have four. Some have um, transparent, semi-transparent, semi-opaque, and opaque. And this one just has transparent, semi-transparent, or opaque, and then opaque. 
Um, it looks like all the colors here are either transparent or um, semi-transparent. So we've got Rose Matter Permanent here. Now I believe I read that the reason they came out with this is because customers were asking for a Rose Matter. However, um, Rose Matter is an incredibly fugitive color and so I think they wanted to come up with a new option that would be more permanent and uh, more reliable than such a fugitive color. It's a nice rose color as the name might suggest. It is a, an excellent light fast with non-staining properties, non-granulating and transparent pigment. There is a series number, that's how expensive the paint is. So the series goes from like one to, I don't know, four or five. And series one is the least expensive with the series four and five being most expensive. And that has to do with the pigments that are used in the paint itself. Um, and then they also have like a serial number almost. That's their number that they catalog. I honestly, I know some artists use this number. I don't use that number for anything. I would rather look at the pigment number, which is why I wrote them in on the cards after looking them up on the website. Um, so this rose matter is made from three different pigments, PR209, PV19, and PR202. Now the Payne's Blue Gray I'm actually really interested in because um, these two pigments are what make up their indigo paint, which I already own. So I'm wondering how different they are. I mean, obviously in a different ratio, they'll be a little bit different. Um, it's called Payne's Blue Gray. The company also already has a Payne's Gray like many companies do. Let me go ahead and pull up this chart real quick. All right, so this is gonna be a little bit hard to show, but I think I've got them all on the screen. This is the new Daniel Smith Payne's Blue Gray. We've got the Indigo here, which is made with the same two pigments, and then we've got Payne's Gray over here. And um, actually, as the names would suggest, it, it kind of follows suit, where Indigo is the most blue out of the bunch. Um, it is more staining, however, and um, transparent versus the Payne's Blue Gray is a little bit more of a gray color rather than a blue color. And um, it has a staining rating of two, so it's a little less staining, but it's semi-transparent. And then our Payne's Gray over here is the most gray version. Um, this one granulates unlike the other two and it is semi-transparent uh, or semi-opaque, depending on what you want to call it. Oh, really, Cricket? Okay. This. Now, I'm really curious to see this raw sienna light because um, PY42 I had as my yellow ochre as my first tube. They've actually replaced the yellow ochre with PY43 and now we've got this new color with PY42 being the raw sienna light. They also have several other colors in this range as well. If we look here, they've also, in addition to their yellow ochre, they've also got Mars Yellow, which is a little bit more yellow than the ochre, and then Raw Sienna, which is the PBR7, not PY42, so this is the true Raw Sienna, and we can see how this differs with the Raw Sienna Light. This is definitely a more yellow color than the other two. It is still semi-transparent uh, versus their new yellow ochre is actually rated as transparent. Um, so that's interesting. It would be really curious to see how it actually mixes into the paintings. Here we have one of two pastel colors that was added to the line. This is Wisteria and it's a very soft pinkish purple. It is semi-opaque. It's made with PY6, which is a white color, as well as PR122. Um, it's moderately light fast, uh, and the other classifications are pretty normal. And then we also have lavender, which is the other pastel. I'll skip over to it. This is a lavender color, obviously, a light purple. On the bluer side, And I can't imagine myself having any use for these two colors with the types of paintings that I do, but for a floral painting, obviously with the names Wisteria and Lavender, they would probably be pretty helpful. 
Alright, so we've had the this raw sienna light up here. We also have a burnt sienna light, which is made from PR101 and PO48. So PR101 can make that orangey shade of burnt sienna that some companies carry, although Daniel Smith's is made from PBR7. And then PO48 is quinacridone burnt orange, so I expect this to be a very orangey color. A natural orangey color, I should say. Which is true. This is a transparent color. And looking at Daniel Smith's um, color chart here, there aren't any other that are really comparable to it. So I think they must have offered this version for people who like that orangier sienna look, like Winsor & Newton's uh, Burt Sienna is really orange. It's kind of similar to their transparent red oxide uh, from Daniel Smith that has all the same ratings. So, um, probably pretty pretty similar in composition although it looks like the transparent red oxide does granulate a bit more and there's nothing else that really compares to it in its transparency I would say the closest thing is the quinacridone burnt orange which it is made from so it just depends on if you want that convenience color or not next up we have quinacridone lilac which is PR122 it is a moderately light, fast pigment that stains, no granulation, and very transparent. And this is an incredibly vibrant, vibrant pink. It's a beautiful, beautiful color. And last but not least, this I hear is a lot of people's new favorite color. This is Aussie Red Gold. It's made from three different pigments. It's PY83, PR101, and PV19. It is a light, fast, and transparent color, moderate staining. It's a really, really rich gold color. I definitely don't think that any of their existing colors really match it. I can show you it against a couple of them. Here's against the quinacridone gold here, which is more brown. Um, against quinacridone, no, against quinacridone deep gold, also more brown. And yeah, that's really it. So that's a pretty unique mix of color for them. Alright, so there you have it. Here are the new Dana Smith colors for 2017. Thanks again to Ophelia for sending me this card. I'm really excited to, to be seeing these. There's some really gorgeous colors in here. This lilac is so vivid. It's so pretty. Um, so I hope that this was helpful for you if you're interested in picking up any of these new colors. I'll put a link in the description below to where you can find them, and I will see you on Wednesday for the next video.